Hey guys, it's Shelby. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. Uh, today's video is not one that I wanted to be recording today. Um, however, I moved, well not, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say, you guys. I don't. Um, this was going to be a live stream. Uh, I didn't want to make this video. Oh, where do I even start? I heard about the tragic events that happened at Astro World Festival last night. And um, there was supposed to be a different video today, but I have to push that and then, and I have to make this because it's so, this is my city that this happened in and I'm trying to keep my composure, um, but it's not easy. Those of you who watch my channel know that I'm a very like, emotional person. I get uh, sensitive. I um, feel a lot. <laughs> and when I woke up this morning and saw what happened at Astroworld last night, I was shocked. I was shocked because I knew people there, friends that were there. I knew people that were supposed to be there, but ended up selling their tickets for one reason or the other, and so didn't go. And just the tragedy that hit my city because of that. I don't know. I'm really moved. I really moved to tears by all. I don't even know how to describe what I'm feeling, <laughs> but it's not good. And so I wanted to talk a little bit more about this whole situation with you guys. Um, I have a feeling this is going to take me several takes to get through some of the stuff I'm going to talk about. So this video will be predominantly a voiceover style video just to allow myself the ability to do multiple takes of things if I do happen to get emotional and I don't want to ugly cry on camera because this isn't about me. It's about the tragedy that occurred at Astroworld and when it comes down to it, that tragedy did not directly affect me. Um, I don't know anybody personally who passed away from that. Uh, from the events that occurred. I don't know anybody who was seriously injured. I do know people that were in the thick of it and that made it out. Um, and I know them personally. I've known them for years. Um, and so I guess this video is just going to kind of be outlining everything that happened at Astroworld that I know of, my thoughts on the whole situation, and some exclusive um, I don't even want to call it a receipt in this style of video, but exclusive um, co like comments, I guess, from people that I know um, personally that were directly affected or that are directly involved, including one from a dear friend of mine who actually was able to go to an after party. I know, imagine an after party from this thing, but I guess at the time when they planned the after party, they didn't foresee this tragedy occurring. Um, and actually was in contact with Drake um, at his after party and kind of give an insight into um, how the vibe was there and to how Drake was feeling about everything that occurred. So if you're interested in hearing more about a little bit of that, then keep on watching. I'm not gonna put an intro in this video. Um, it doesn't seem fitting or right, so consider this my intro. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to move over to a voiceover style video uh, for the rest of this. I just wanted to come on camera and kind of at least say hi <laughs> and tell you that um, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm saying, but okay, let's move on to a voiceover style video. You guys, this stuff is so hard to watch. Um, I just got done watching a pretty detailed um, you know, depiction of the gist of what happened at least. And I watched Rich Lux's story on Instagram about that. I've also been scrolling through Twitter and everything. I'm going to go ahead and be playing Rich's story um, throughout this video on the screen for you guys. So you can see just kind of like 
pictures and video footage of things that were captured. I obviously can't include any of the sound because it'll get copyrighted because it's Travis Scott's music and YouTube doesn't allow us to play the music, but I'll at least have the, the video playing for you in the background while we talk about all this stuff. So yesterday was Friday, November 5th, 2021, and Travis Scott hosted his Astroworld Festival that he is kind of known for putting on these really extravagant uh, shows, and they're normally such a good time. And, um, you know, Travis Scott's from Houston, and so it's a huge deal for us in Houston when Travis does Astroworld. For those who aren't caught up on this, um, Astroworld was actually the name of our six flags here in Houston, and such a dear little, like, uh, it doesn't exist anymore, we don't have it here any, anymore in Houston, but Astroworld, it's, I mean, it just... I don't know, like you have to be from Houston to like know and love Astroworld, the Six Flags thing, um, and just like understand and appreciate it. It's just a part of our childhood here in Houston, if you grew up in Houston, when it was alive and well, and Travis did, and so it's just very much, um, we're very connected to Astroworld in general, and then Travis Scott, because he's from Houston, and the Astroworld Festival. I have... I know people directly that were supposed to be at this festival last night, but didn't go. It was um, people who had multiple tickets. They were going to take their kids with them and stuff, and um, they didn't go. And um, it, it, they were ended up being at work with me, you know, instead that night. And it's just so, so crazy how everything unfolded. Um, just a little like insight into what I was personally doing when this was going on. I was actually working during, I worked last night and during the festival, not at the festival, but at the restaurant that I work at. And um, I remember like a, our busser and our host and the couple servers, they were all watching this concert on Apple Music in the downtime that we had because it wasn't super busy. And, and so we actually had some time to kind of like view the concert and stuff like that on Apple Music on, on our cell phones. And I remember... Um, and this is, I'm going to get kind of shaken up because I, knowing what was going on in the background that we didn't know about that was happening during this is really, really shaking me up. But I just remember being in our kitchen, polishing some glassware, or doing something, and my busser goes, oh, my God. And so uh, we were like, what? And then he was like, Drake's coming out. And so me and like three other people ran over to his phone like super, super fast. And we'd all we hear is just Drake. And then, you know, we're listening or watching. And then all of a sudden, you know, a few minutes pass. And then we hear, you know, sicko mode start playing. And we're like, oh, my God. And we're like freaking out. We're like so excited. We're watching it. We're all saying to each other, oh, my God, I wish I was there. What I would give to be there right now. I wish I was there I, and people were just giving their accounts of I didn't get a chance to buy tickets because of this or you know what oh my god like I totally flopped I sold my tickets because of this and oh my god my friends there right now they're probably having so much fun and all of this stuff and we were <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry I had to like kind of contain my composure a little bit just because at that moment when they were doing sicko mode that's when all this stuff started and that's when all this stuff got really bad and people started dying and it's just so crazy and so sad to think that i was watching this concert looking at it from a viewpoint of just apple music whoever was filming that you know and it just looked like such a fun thing and to know that there was so much pain and stuff going on is really really sad and it hurts a lot to know that that was going on while I was just sitting there watching the concert wishing I was there and thinking that it looked like such a good time okay now that I've gotten that count out of the way I want to talk a little bit more about just you know what happened exactly and what people are saying there's a bunch of different stories going on out there and there's nothing really definite from any um any doctors um regarding the cause of death for people that passed away at this event yet but i just want to kind of talk about what happened what might have went wrong and the theories that are out there as to what's what happened at this event so um this event was obviously very large and there was a um 
a Snapchat uh, group, like every, there was some stuff going around on Snapchat and on Instagram and different social media stuff from people that were uh, really, really big into Travis Scott and into festivals and stuff like that. And it was a uh, rush the gate um, type of situation. And basically what rushing the gate is at a festival or at a concert or any kind of like big event like that, it's where you get so many people together that the security and then you you rush in towards the gate and what that does is there's not enough security there's not enough people to hold everybody back so they had just have to let everybody in they just break they rush through the gate they break in basically and that's basically what happened at this festival based on what i have heard around here from people in my city who went who were um, just no people who did go and things like that so apparently there was a gate rushing situation that went on at least that's what I've heard happened. And that is what caused the uh, massive influx of people that were there. Now, don't get me wrong. This thing would have been jam-packed regardless. But then when you have, uh, at, a, at a certain point, a festival does sell out of tickets and does sell out. And based on my knowledge, what happened was there was a large influx of people that were not did not have tickets to this concert that rushed the gate and broken without tickets into this event. Now that is just what I heard. So, I mean, I am not um, like saying this is like a complete and total fact. That's just what I've heard around the grapevine. Now, um, there's also some theories uh, that there's a couple different theories going on as to when things got um, uh, kind of rowdy and when the trampling started there's also um the trampling happened with with several people but then there's also saying that the deaths have been occurred by an injection that like somebody was running around injecting people uh with needles and um the first thing is uh when drake started performing um when drake came out that there was just this massive rush of people that just ran um, tried to run towards the stage because Drake was there. And that's like the first theory of like how all the trampling and all of that happened, which is it, when I compare it to how my friends, my coworkers and I reacted when we realized that Drake was there and my coworker said, oh my God, Drake is here. And we all ran towards the stage. I literally remember when that happened one of my coworkers said, oh my God, everyone's going to run to the stage right now. Isn't that, that is, my coworker literally was like, everyone's going to rush the stage right now. Everyone's going to want to try to get up there. Drake's there. Oh my God. And that's, I mean, that's what, that's what I think when this, the trampling and everything started. Now there are tons of accounts out there of people that were there saying that it was just so packed that they just absolutely they couldn't breathe. There was too many bodies kind of like compressed against each other. And when you have that many bodies in one space, it's like you're, you, there's not enough oxygen because you're all emitting your CO2. I think it's CO2, right? I'm not a scientist. I don't know, but you're all emitting your CO2 into the air and you're not getting enough oxygen back in. And so people were getting lightheaded. They were fainting. You know, the weather wasn't hot, thank God. But, you know, when you have that much body heat packed in one area, it's definitely not going to be cool. And that's another theory as to why, um, like, the trampling and, like, pe the fainting and all that kind of stuff started. Now, the other thing that people are saying is that somebody was running around with a needle injecting people with some sort of substance. And I don't know if that's true or false. I've heard news sources say that. Um, apparently, the news the the news here in Houston said that they have one confirmed um, death that was um, from this supposed needle, but they don't know about a spread from that. And then there, the the more accounts that I read personally are of people being like trampled and of it being a um, a situation with too many. Uh, bodies in one spot and not of this whole injection thing so I don't really know it could be a combination of the two I really just don't know it's all a really honestly a big mystery we'll have to find out more information as that comes they did cancel Astroworld tonight for the show that was supposed to be tonight November 6th and they did that because the scene is a crime scene right now so they cannot hold a concert there um, tonight and also you know, I mean, 
a tragedy, a, a freaking horrible tragedy occurred at the site the night before. Um, I, okay, so I do have a, a friend, a dear friend of mine who was able to get an invite to the after party that Drake was holding. It was invite only. You had to be invited by somebody that was on the list. So the invite list was Drake. Obviously Drake was there. Kyrie Irving was there. Gunna was there, if you guys know that, uh, who Gunna is. Travis Scott's brother was there. And my friend who I know was personally there at that party. Now I, I didn't get an answer as to why she thinks they still held this party considering the tragedy that occurred before. Um, my guess is, I mean, I guess <laughs> they planned the after party before all of this stuff happened. It was like an invite only thing that was planned days in advance. And um, I, the only thing that I can imagine is that they just felt like they still were obligated to go to this. Um, but my friend did uh, come in contact with Drake and spoke with Drake's team and people that Drake was with. And uh, my friend did tell me personally that she saw Drake and that he seemed very upset, um, was not very sad, um, just down, didn't want to take any pictures with anybody, did shake people's hands, but didn't want to take any pictures with every anybody, was just very, very upset and um, looked very troubled um, after knowing the events that occurred. And she told me that um, that's when she found out somebody passed away, is that someone from Drake's team had told her that Dr some people had passed away at the event, and that's why Drake is not really wanting to take any photos with anybody or really wanting to see anybody. He's just very upset at the events that occurred. My friend did not see Travis Scott at this party. Travis was not at this after party, um, but sources are saying that Travis was really, really upset, obviously, about hearing the events that occurred um, at his festival, and that was in tears after the concert was over. Now, there's a lot of stuff going around on social media, and there's video footage of Travis singing, and um, there's literally people being carried away on stretchers um, while he's singing. And there's a cup. I don't... Oh, you guys, it looks really bad. The optics look really, really bad in this situation. Um, I The only thing that I can say in that, and this is not a defense of Travis Scott in this, I is that this is a festival of things thousands and thousands and thousands of people with tickets, not to mention the ones that supposedly rushed the gate to get in without tickets. Anybody who has ever performed on a stage can probably relate to this, especially on a, a large, you know, to a large, large group of audience like this. When you are on stage, you have so many lights in your face that it might look that you like you can see what's going on, but you really can't really fully see what's going on. So I can't defend Travis Scott and say that, oh no, like Travis didn't know what was going on. How could he not? Because the optics do look really bad. I can only speak from personal experience. And I have performed on obviously not a stage as large as what he had for Astro World Festival, but I have performed on stages before with lots of bright lights in my face and larger stages as well, where there are, you know, hundreds of people there. And I can say that you really, when you're performing, you don't see into the audience you really don't see like that so if if travis did see somebody being carried out on a stretcher or anything like that if his view was in range for that which honestly you guys i mean when i've been on stage there i can't even see past the first or second row and that's just that's just my experience from being on stage if you guys have ever performed at anything please let me know in the comment section down below if you performed on stage and let me know if you can relate to that um, now, I'm not talking like a black box theater kind of a situation, even though you can't even see the whole audience in a black box theater per performance of something. But if you performed on a stage in front of like in an auditorium or in a stadium um, or I've performed at, you know, one of our big theaters we have here in Houston, as well as I've sang the national anthem at an Astros game in Minute Maid Park before and in Houston here. And you cannot see the audience. You just can't. And so um, I'm not defending him because I don't know. The optics do look really bad. I'm just speaking from personal experience on that. I don't know. I just, I don't want to think that Travis saw people passed away on stretchers that had died on stretchers and just 
kept singing. I want to believe that if he did see something, maybe he thought some, maybe he thought somebody fell or, you know, like, I, I don't know. I want to believe that he didn't know the severity of the situation that was going on. Um, and as a performing it's, performer, it's like the show must go on type of mentality. And so I want to believe that that was the mindset and that he was trying, you know, he either didn't realize or he was trying to stay focused and didn't think the, severe, the situation was as severe as it was. I want to believe the intentions are good, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now, I don't know. I mean, there's also people out there that are saying, and this is kind of taking a left hand turn here, but also, I mean, anything's possible at this point. There's also people saying that this is just like some sort of like, cons you know, Illuminati stuff, which is really taking a left turn here, guys. And I hope you don't lose you. But I mean, it just seems it, it just is weird that that video specifically of him standing there, you know, singing in this kind of like low, almost like um, melodic type of slow way while there's this person being carried out on a stretcher that has just passed away. It is really, really kind of weird. And I'm, I mean, I don't necessarily believe in any of that stuff, to be honest with you guys. I really don't. But I mean, when you're involved, and this is another thing, the Kardashian curse, you know, I mean, is this his Kardashian curse? Is this the start of it? Travis Scott has been one of the only ones who's been unscathed by the whole Kardashian curse thing that we've seen. It take Lamar Odom, it took Kanye West, and it hasn't, it didn't affect Tyga, but is it going to affect Travis Scott? You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if I believe in the Kardashian curse, to be honest with you. I don't know. I'm just talking out loud here, you guys. I'm just saying it's just all very, very strange. At the end of the day, um, I, I am keeping all of the families that have those that have been injured, those that have been injured and these, those that have passed, I'm keeping all of their families in my thoughts during this extremely difficult time. I can't even imagine what it must be like to go through. Um, I am very emotional about this situation just because it does hit very close to home. Uh, Houston is a city that is very much a, um, we stand together in a lot of things and we come together and we're strong and we're united when it comes to, when it comes to tragedy and, and hardship. And we've been through a lot here as a city in the past, like five years or so. And, uh, we really do stand together and stand strong in the face of adversity. So, um, I am keeping, you know, all of the families in my thoughts and, um, you know, obviously rest in peace to those that lost their lives during this festival. It should not have been a place for someone to lose their life. It should have been a fun time. And it just makes you think, you know, everything in this world is just so dangerous. It seems nowadays, it seems like there's just tragedy every direction that you turn. And even something as fun as a concert festival is dangerous. Now it's, it's just, I wonder what's going to happen as far as responsibility for this kind of stuff goes. Um, I, I would have thought that the venue would have had, you know, to do like more to do with this and have to face more consequences for this. But some other people that I talked to said that pro whoever produced the event has more, you know, liability in this. Is this all on Travis Scott or is this on the stadium that produced the event, which was NRG or is it, in fact, on the people that produced the event. I don't know. I mean, there's so many different variables in this. And is it on the local authorities, like the Houston Police Department, the Houston Fire Department? Like, did we have enough uh, security and stuff on site with as far as that goes? I don't, I mean, there's just so many things to look at here as to why this tragedy occurred and, and who's, who's to blame for it. But honestly, you guys, I think that it's several, several missing pieces as to who's responsible for this and why this tragedy occurred, you know, and it's at the end of the day, that's just, it is what it is. It is a tragedy. That is what it is. It's a tragedy. And, um, while I do think that, you know, that those that were responsible for things and in charge of things with this event do need to be held liable for what happened. I also think that it's very important for us to kind of take a step back and remember that it's no one's intention to have a tragedy like this occur, you know? So we need to remember that these are, while people made probably some pretty big mistakes in this, that they are human and that it was nobody's intention for 
Astro World Festival to have such a huge tragedy with 11 lives lost. Like that was not the intention. So just to have a little bit of, um, you know, compassion for all of those involved, you know, and wish, you know, all of us healing that, that were involved with this. So anyway, you guys, I'm going to, I'm, talking a lot you guys we're at 25 minutes i'm gonna go ahead and end the video thank you so much for watching today's video if you did enjoy it make sure you leave me a big thumbs up and please leave me your comments down below on everything that you think about this whole astral world uh tragedy that uh occurred here in houston last night hey, this one hits home for me so it's not something a topic i normally talk about i don't normally talk about um rap rappers and musicians and stuff like that but i felt uh really really closely tied to the story so I wanted to sh I needed to share my uh my opinion and my thoughts on this and um so let me know yours as well and uh don't forget to like comment subscribe share do all the things this isn't really a normal kind of outro for me but um I don't think it's appropriate to really do a full outro and all of that so anyway you guys I will see you in my next video bye guys